Hey, welcome to Q&A, where you ask your questions on faith and life, and I do my best to give a biblical perspective. As always, you can ask your questions on slider.com. Use the hashtag ALC23. I'd love to hear from you. Because the reason we do this as a church is not because uh, I think that I know better, but it's as we we talk about our issues, we ask our questions, that we learn from one another, we pull our knowledge, and together we go from strength to strength. Uh, I think the, the days of the sage on stage are long gone. It's, it's as we learn from one another that we all grow stronger and our strength becomes uh, that which helps guard our hearts and position us for the things that God has for us. So uh, that's why we do this. So that's why I love hearing your questions. So as I say, post your questions on slider.com. Use the hashtag ALC23. Love to hear from you. Well, let's jump into today's question. A friend is struggling as they've been hurt by church. What are your thoughts on how to get back involved with church after you've been hurt like this? Mm. Now, that's a great question because sadly, we're seeing and hearing this more and more and more. It just seems that we're in a season where it just seems that uh, people are being hurt by church, uh, things that have happened in churches, by church leaders, by people in the church. And, and it takes it takes a tremendous toll. And, and, and when we hear about this, it should break our heart because Paul's very clear that we belong to one another. There's only one body, uh, the church, and it's comprised of all of us. And he says, when one part hurts, we all hurt. So when these types of things happen, um, we should feel it. And I guess as I read your question, my, my initial response is, is one of great joy because as I read this question, it, it seems to me from the what, what you've asked that you've actually been a really great friend to this person and, and you've been helping them process that hurt and, and work through it to the point they are ready to, to re-engage, which is healthy because your question isn't about how do I help them overcome that hurt? The question is, how do I help them re-engage? So I'm going to make the assumption you've you've taken the the step to help them uh, work through that hurt, process it, and now that's called maturity, and, and I love it. I just take my hat off to you. If this is your question, or if you've been doing this for others, it's a sign of spiritual maturity, and that's 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 a great thing. So, um, what are my thoughts on on how to re-engage? Mm. Well. I, you know, I'm aware that every every form of hurt is is very specific. There's been specific context, specific things. Um, different people are going to feel it in, in different ways, and 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 I you know and I part of me feels a little bit inadequate um, just giving generalities because you know one size doesn't fit all. But as as I think as I think about it in terms of your question, um, how would I re-engage? I think there's I think there's three things that I would probably always um, suggest. The first is is prayer. Uh, you know, I'm sure that you've been meeting with this friend and praying in order to process and work through the hurt. But I would continue meeting with them to pray. But to transition that um, from processing hurts to beginning to enter into a new community of faith. So I'd be praying for forgiveness, as I'm sure you have. But you know making sure that you've not for, just forgiven them, but you've let that go so that you're not carrying that brokenness, that hurt, uh, all of those things into the the new church environment. You want to leave the, those those past hurts, those baggage behind, so that you're going in unencumbered, free to experience um, the, the new community. I know that's not always comfortable. I know it's going to be easier said than done. But you might be praying for forgiveness, praying for grace, so that as best as possible, you're going into this new experience with a sense of hopefulness, with a sense of expectation. I know that you're going to be anxious, but but you are more expectant than you are anxious because of the prayer that's gone in. Uh, I would also suggest, depending upon the nature of hurt, again, this is a generality, um, probably I would recommend taking small steps. If the nature of the hurt meant that you had been cut off from fellowship, been put off from attending church for a while, then I would take small steps to, to re-engage. Uh, I would take them along to my connect group, uh, my Bible study group, life group, whatever it is you call it, because the dynamics are more manageable. You already have a relationship with these people, so when you invite your friend, you're inviting them into existing relationships. So it's safer. There's a, there's a sense of safety in that. 
Uh, it's known, the dynamics are known, so they're manageable. Uh, it, it means it's they are getting to meet a few people first, so they're feeling people out. And then as that takes place, th there's people around them as they step into a, a Sunday worship environment where there are more people around. So it's a, it's a natural progression in that sense. Um, I would also be encouraging people to go in to their new, as they re-engage with church with an open heart, um, to be open to others. Yeah, I get what, um, you know, Proverbs 4, 23, guard your heart, uh, and we do need to guard our heart, but we need to make sure that it's not so tightly locked down that we're, we're closed off to people because we don't want to be hurt again, because uh, that it flows into what I was saying before about forgiveness. We go in with a with a, with an openness. Hey, I'm going to assume the best. The, this is these are God's people. Yes, they're not perfect. No church is perfect. Yes, they're going to get it wrong. I'm going to get it wrong, but I'm going to assume the best um, because as you do that, you're more likely to experience God's grace. You're more likely to to see the possibilities because you're not looking for what's wrong. You're looking for a place to to engage and to connect and everything else. So so that would be my general advice. Um, yeah, and I, I would also want to say that it's important as part of that process to recognize that that the church did not hurt you. If, if you've ever been in that situation, let me be very clear, the church did not hurt you. People hurt you. Now, I get when people are in leadership, it feels like the church has hurt you, but it's not the church it, it's people and the reason i think that's important is because it helps us maintain a healthier perspective uh, and see the church for what it is rather than for what um for its shortcomings and i these issues have been around for forever almost you know if you read the bible galatians for example paul wrote to a church in galatia to to address issues of legalism which inevitably is going to cause hurt it's going to pit people against one another. It's going to rule people in, rule people out. Uh, he wrote a letter to the Philippians because they have a lot of conflict as a result of um, selfish ambition. Uh, so that, again, is going to generate hurt. He, he writes, we have two letters. We know he wrote more than that to, to the church in Corinth over a bunch of problems that all flow in many ways out of, out of spiritual pride, where they're ranking themselves depending upon their gifts and, and everything else. And I simply say that that it helps us remember that that no church is perfect, that because people aren't perfect, but the church is still the bride of Christ. It's what he he loves. It's what he died for. It's what he fights for, and it's what he's coming for. You know, the church is comprised of individuals, but he's coming for a church, a bride. So we can't afford to cut ourselves off from it and miss, uh, and miss being being caught up in, in that in that wonderful. Uh, uh, time of that, what the Bible talks about, the marriage supper of the Lamb, where he sits down with his bride. We want to be part of it. And so uh, it's important to recognize when we've been hurt that there's people that's hurt us. Matthew 18 gives us a process that to work through. I know that it's easier said than done um, to try and, and resolve things. But um, James says in James 1, 19, 20, be slow to take offense because the enemy wants us to, to feel the hurt more keenly and to apportion the blame where it ought not to be put so that we will cut ourselves off from the bride of Christ. Uh, when we recognize its people, um, then it, we, it sort of gives us a perspective. It keeps things uh, in, in focus. So, yeah, that's, that, that I feel a little bit inadequate um, dealing with generalities, but there you go. Those, those are my thoughts. You're asking my thoughts. Like, those are my thoughts. Love to hear your thoughts. So why not post a response in the, in the uh, question below? But that's it for now. Until next time. God bless.